All right, so now that you know what it is we're going to build, let's go ahead and build it. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, that was fast and easy. What we're going to do is start off by creating a uh, Z-Sphere framework. You don't necessarily have to do this. As you saw earlier on, you can just drop down a single Z-Sphere, go straight into sketch mode, and just start adding in volume. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work that way. I, I think it's... It's nice. It's very organic. There's a good flow to it. But due to precision concerns, I am going to create an entire framework skeleton system out of Z-Spheres. And then we'll start sculpting from there. So let's jump over to Preferences and Initialize ZBrush. And that'll give us just a complete base to start from. Now, also, I will probably be staring at this the whole time I'm working. So this picture that we saw in the, in the uh, earlier video, mm -hmm. I will have that up somewhere. Just so you guys know, that is the only real image of these guys that exists. Yeah. So if you start Google searching, the, the, only, the reason we're just using that one and not like a schematic view or anything like that is that this is all we have. Well, it made it up on Scott's uh, Flickr account, so... Yeah, so it's been recognized. Yeah, exactly. So without any further ado, let's create our Z-Sphere. So I'll just go ahead and click, bring this in. It doesn't really matter how big it is or where it's positioned. We just need one. We'll hit T to go into edit mode. And... You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's just good habit because it's very easy as you work in ZBrush to get so caught up in how awesome everything is to forget to save. So what I'm going to do is create a new save here, and we'll call this key underscore lineman because he's a lineman, and uh, click save. And then that way I can just come in and keep saving over that over and over again. All right, so now let's start drawing. I'm in draw mode already, but I'd like there to be some form of symmetry, even though I'm not going to be building arms and legs immediately. The cool thing about turning on symmetry is if I rotate to the underside, you notice we get a little bit of snapping mm -hmm. that allows us to create a sphere directly on the bottom or top of our initial Z-sphere, which is extremely handy. Also, if we rotate off to the side so that we're kind of edge onto this guy, we know that we're looking right down the side of this object. It's just kind of a neat thing to keep in mind. Now, the design of these guys is such that they have a horizontal section and a vertical section. And every so often, we'll be making reference to things that have been uh, read or covered in the audiobook, just descriptions from the story as well. And one of the things that, is that these segments are about six feet tall, and they go back about six feet as well. So you're kind of looking like at a letter L. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I like to do that sort of thing if I move my little Z-sphere over here, is I will, first off, take my brush size and pull it down, get them, well, try to pull it down, thank you, and then I will get the move tool out, and I'll just pull this guy to where I want the last sphere to be, switch over to draw mode, again, that's with the Q key. As I move forward, please realize I will probably stop calling out these hotkeys. You really do need to get the hang of draw with Q, move with W, scale with S, and uh, R with rotate. The ones that I'll be using more often than anything else are just Q and W. I'll be jumping between those a lot. So we'll switch over to draw mode, click right here in the middle, switch over to move mode, and boom, you just make an L very much like that. Now, I'm a big fan of remembering where your root is. Uh, the root is absolutely critical, and I already have a problem with what I'm doing here because if I I'm just, I'm thinking ahead. I would kind of like the root to be in this location. So mm -hmm. even though I just did that, it suddenly occurs to me that that could be problematic if I'm really trying to keep track of where my root is. So I'm going to change this around. So bear with me. Uh, if I pull this guy here, we'll just let this guy be a halfway segment in between the back. I mean, I could delete it if I want to, but I'm not going to. Let's go back to draw mode, and I'll draw this up here. Switch back to the side view. Now, I'm holding down shift to get a nice snappy rotate directly to the side. Okay. Keep that in mind. And we'll pull this up, and now we've got our level, uh, our little L shape again. And for overall volume, I can scale this up as well. So cool, we've got a key body. All right. That quick and easy. Now, branching off from here, let's just take a, a quick look at... There we go. So we know we've got two arms on each side. We've got three legs on each side. Mm -hmm. So we can at least start there. I'm going to try dragging that off to the side and not minimizing it next time. I will often, when I'm doing this kind of thing, um, start off by grabbing my scale, and I will scale everything down. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm alt-clicking on one of those connector spheres just to shrink everything and make it thinner, mm -hmm. because I'm thinking of this more like a wire armature onto which I'm going to be applying uh, the, the clay of my sculpt using Z-Sketching. Okay. It also makes it a little easier for me to conceive of all of the spacing I need for everything. So... I'm trying to give kind of insights into how I work. 
So let's take this one sphere I made earlier. He's going to be the root from which we will pull out a pair of legs. Let's hit Q to go back to draw mode, and we'll make two more of those. Boom. And, and the last one, I guess we can just pull from the end itself. We can't really tell what his, uh, his rump or his back area looks like, so we'll just sort of infer it a little bit. And make sure I don't accidentally draw. Make sure we're in move mode, and I'll just sort of even these guys out a bit. Not perfectly, because this root area that I've got right here, this is still going to come a little bit forward before the, the legs are done doing what they're doing. Okay, so now let's pull out just the initial uh, areas where the legs will come out. So I'll hit Q for draw again. Pull out like so, and you'll notice because we have symmetry, it does that on both sides. And what we're going to do is slide outwards to about the thickness of where the hips would be. So if you consider there's kind of like a central spine running down the middle, the legs don't actually start until you get out what I'm assuming is about a foot to a foot and a half. So that's all we're doing here. We're just putting some spacing in. Mm -hmm. Now, we can keep on drawing from there, so I'll go ahead and hit Q again. And we can draw in another sphere, and you could... You got a couple of options here. You could pull this up, and that'll be, you know, go to the first joint of the leg. I'm going to do something a little different. Let's rotate around to a front view. And I'm going to pull this down to about where I want the leg to end. Now, these guys are pretty low to the ground. Their design is pretty hunkered. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, how we're going to be designing this. Now, I do want to mention, if you were building this guy for animation and you were hardcore about it, something you were going to be taking over to Maya and rigging up, you may not want to model him in any kind of a pose. You might want to stretch these legs out or find what you think is going to be his default pose and make sure to model it in that. We're not going to be stressed about that sort of thing straight out of the gate. As long as we stay on top of things like multiple saves, we can go back to our Z sketch and we can reshape this at any time. Right. Okay, so by setting a sphere where we want these to end, we can use additional spheres in the connectors to get what we want. So let's just count up the joints real quick. We go up to one knee and then down to kind of a second knee, and then we're back down at the foot. This is where we're ending. I'm not even going to worry about the toes right now. So basically we have two joints to add. I'll drop in two joints like so, get my move tool out, and just start repositioning. And then we can come over here to the front view, kind of space these apart, space these apart. Okay. And there you go. Very, very quick and dirty. Now, let's come back in here to the central segment at the, the back. Go back to draw mode. Do the same thing. We'll space these apart. So move, slide out. And then because I am, I'm right here and staring at it, we'll do this again. Move, spread out. And I'm using a, a lot of snapping here. Now, I have no perspective. At least I don't think I do. No, I don't. Uh, I like tapping the P key and getting perspective. For me, once I start getting into things that are overlapping, mm -hmm. if I'm staring at an orthographic view, I get confused. If you don't, that's cool. Um, congratulations. Um, but let's go back over to draw mode with Q. Same thing we did before. I'm just going to pull this guy down to where I want the legs to end. And we could go ahead and pull it out a little bit as well. And do the same thing here, so Q. So I'm kind of building both the legs at once. Now, some of these are getting kind of thin, some are getting kind of fat. It doesn't matter too much, um, but just to keep things nice and neat. And you're saying that again because of your intent of uh, Z-Sketch? Yeah, because I'm just using this really like a wire armature right. on top of which I'm going to slap down a whole bunch of clay to thicken everything up. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm also just because I like it. I'm going to bring these legs back, okay. bring the way they connect in back mm -hmm. slightly. Um, but remember, you have all kinds of power to reposition everything. Right. So don't feel like you're constrained into anything at this point. It's way too early for that. So click, 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 and click. And jump back over to move mode, and we can pull this up and take a look from a, a cooler angle, spread this out. Spread this out. Also, don't be afraid to turn on the floor. Sometimes that'll help, too. It just kind of helps you visualize what it is you're doing here. Notice that floor, too. It's constrained to the lowest point of your tool. So you see a lot of that going on. Uh, don't let that scare you, though. That's fine. And pull this back. Pull this back. Now we can grab our Z-sphere out here. Pull back. That's not what I meant to grab. You... And he's looking very spidery. 
but they kind of do. And we can adjust all of these proportions a little later on. Right now, my goal is just to get the initial shapes in place. Sure. And we can adjust, stretch, repose, mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff as we go. Okay, so we've got some basis down for some legs. Now we need to get some arms in there. Okay. So let's switch back over to draw mode. And just to bring the picture back in, in case you've forgotten what this guy looks like, we have two areas from which arms are going to come out. So just like we did before, we're just going to drop down a couple of new spheres from which we can anchor. And the first one, click and drag. This first sphere, we just pull out to get the thickness of the body, just like you would, again, if it was a real wire armature. And then I'll use the same technique that I used with the legs. We'll drop on a new sphere. I'll pull this out to about where I want the hands to be. These first hands will have kind of low and forward. And then just so that everybody is kind of on uh, the level, and I love having to do that, uh, we'll we just count up our, our joints here. So this is kind of where we're starting, joint one, joint two, and then the end where the hands are going to be. Same thing here. We'll have joint one, joint two, and so on. So let's hit Q. Q? I didn't have focus when I hit that, apparently. Yeah. Joint one, joint two. And what I'm doing right now is just alt dragging on some connector spheres to position these guys. And that's pretty good for starters. Mm -hmm. Just something so that we have some arms that are forward and ready to rock. So let's do that again. So back to Q for drawing. Draw, move, slide out. Now these arms look, at least in the image, they go back a little bit. And even just speaking in an anatomical sense, you'll see that these arms really feel like they're attached in a forward position so that they kind of naturally flow forward where these are more on the sides of the body. And at least in the way this was designed, this looks very much like a natural thing. Like mm -hmm. these arms would be kind of more back than the, the lower set. So that's how we'll design them, at least for now. Q, draw again, move back. <laughs> looks awesome. And then let me go and scale those back down to I just hit S to scale, by the way, so I must think I'm in Blender. I'm not in Blender, as it turns out. No, I, not, I am, not at all. I am in fact in ZBrush, but uh, I just want to let you guys know that I do know that. So let's say let's end the arms, say right about here, which makes them look all short and stubbly, which is great, because we're just going to drop in two more joints. And we'll pull this back and pull this back. And then we can just kind of start posing from there. Now, if I look at overall proportion of this guy, it looks like the, <clears throat> the torso could be a little taller. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we have the ability to do that really quick. And that's pretty even. Mm -hmm. um, and again, because we still have that awesome mode, we have bind mode, uh, we can even get to the point where we're sketching and then just go from there. Sure. Okay, now we're past the point of the easy stuff. Um, we have our initial shape established. Now uh, the, we have the slightly more difficult things to tackle. Well, I would actually call this the end of the video. I would too. <laughs> I, I, I would too. I just want to kind of point out where we're going. Okay. When I say difficult things, uh, I don't necessarily mean adding a little bit of curvature to any parts of the skeleton. That's just a couple of clicks and moving. But we have things like the hands, mm -hmm. which you can see it really looks like they are all thumbs. Mm -hmm. uh, they just have that look to them. And they branch off in a really cool kind of way. So we're going to have to make a lot of Z-sphere chains off the ends of our limbs because they do the same thing on the feet as well. You mm -hmm. have this almost like a strange elephant toe kind of thing going on down there. Then notice the arms themselves. Uh, they have kind of a radius and ulna joint formation going on, but there really is a division in the flesh there. It's cleaved uh, so that you could you know, maybe reach in and stick your hand in between those two areas. And we want to be able to, to have that as a part of the design too. Right. So we'll be taking a look at how we do that in the next video. Awesome. Thanks a lot.